Hi guys, I'm James. Uh, I work at Fission, uh, which is important because Fission is awesome. Uh, but also it's going to give a little context uh, to why Car Mirror and what we're trying to do with Car Mirror. Um, before I get rolling though, I want to give a very quick acknowledgement. Uh, I didn't do any of this. Uh, so I, I do primarily engineering management at Fission, uh, which means I build nothing. Uh, so special shout out to Justin, who wrote most of the code, has been running this project. And of course, Brooklyn, uh, who is here to make sure I don't say things wrong, uh, who of course designed the spec. Um, okay, how many people know what we're trying to do at Fission? Fission people at least should have their hands up. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, at Fission, our high-level goal, so we have a lot of talks this week uh, about some of the lower-level protocols and things we're working on, but it's all in support of this larger vision where we're trying to redefine how apps are built. Uh, and particularly, we want things like uh, user-owned and user-controlled data, right? So what that means is we have a, an architecture right now that looks a little bit like this. So a user has you know, maybe a couple of devices, a phone, a laptop, they have their collection of files, right? So think like a Dropbox folder or something like that. They have their files. Uh, they wanna be able to sync them between devices, right? So currently that routes through some servers that rerun uh, and then all of that backed by IPFS. So their content's actually available broadly on the IPFS network. Uh, of course, because we're Fission, these files are actually stored as a WinFS uh, directory. So uh, if you're interested in actually having private files on uh, IPFS, see the talks uh, to learn more about uh, WinFS. But one of the things, so in the apps that we build, they're primar primarily, or, or to start at least, they are web-based apps, which means we're operating in a browser. Um, we also have an app publishing platform that you can use from things like GitHub Actions, uh, all of this means we are doing IPFS in hard mode. So almost none of the people using our apps are directly uh, network dialable, right? So in our best case scenario, we are relying on hole punching, which continues to advance, but not quite a perfect scenario. Uh, we also, of course, particularly on mobile devices, we have potential network traffic interruptions, all kinds of uh, limitations there. And if you're trying to do something in a GitHub action, you are time constrained, right? You have a short-lived thing that is spinning up, uh, trying to do, trying to push some files, right? Trying to send some data, uh, and then getting killed off at the end. Um, none of these are uh, the way that Kubo likes to work, uh, or uh, in J JS IPFS's case, in the browser, right? We are already uh, so in in the browser with JS IPFS we're doing bit swap over web sockets, right? So we are dialing into our servers and sending data uh, via bit swap. Make sense so far? Cool. So that sort of sets the stage. So basically all that means, we've had a hard time moving the bytes across that dotted line, right? So, you know, once it gets to our servers and out into the IPFS network, things get a little bit better. We have big, more powerful, more reliable servers that can send the bytes around, but it's that sort of last mile, if you want to call it, right? Getting it from our users' devices to their other devices and other things on the network, right? Uh, a couple more things about the, the context we're sort of operating in. Uh, so with uh, WinFS file systems, uh, we do have deeply nested DAGs uh, that get incremental updates, right? So this is user's data. So every time they take a picture of their cat and add it to their file system, right, that is a new entry. It is a mutable file system that we then want to sync across uh, the network. <clears throat> right, yeah, we want to do sync bidirectionally, right? So if we have uh, an update on one device, we want to make sure that that, sync, uh, that update is reflected on their other devices. Um, yeah, we have, uh, again, like our sort of baseline is always, can we do this in a user's mobile browser? Um, and in that environment, right, we want to minimize the number of network round trips and the latency. So a big thing with BitSwap, right, is there's a lot of network chatter back and forth as we're fetching, uh, fetching blocks and trying to add them to the, the local block store. Right? We'd also like to ideally 
minimize the data transfer as best we can, right? So we don't want to send, uh, again, particularly from a mobile device, but in general, we don't want to send an entire car file, for example, of the user's whole file system, right? Uh, chances are their other devices probably already have some subset of the data, right? Because it's being updated incrementally over time. You know, the phone has most of it, but probably not, you know, the most recent stuff that's happened on their other devices. So we don't want to have to send the entire thing every time. Uh, so what is Car Mirror? Uh, so I'm going to go pretty briefly through the spec itself, uh, largely because the aforementioned Brooklyn gave this talk uh, at IPFS thing last summer. Uh, and she dives a lot more into the details of the spec uh, and how the, the protocol works. I would encourage you to uh, type in the YouTube URL really quickly before I go to the next slide uh, and watch that. All right, uh, so Car Mirror, again, the main goal is to balance the round trips, right? So minimize the network latency uh, while also not sending duplicate blocks, right? So we wanna send just the data that's needed uh, for the new device uh, in a minimal number of steps. Um, one of the, I think, unique concessions or, or like a concession that we've made uh, again, looking back at our current sort of uh, network diagram, we do have servers here. So we do have a trusted endpoint that we can point this at. Uh, so that's an important thing, right? Like we've limited our scope. Uh, this is not a general purpose transfer protocol, although we have some ideas for that. Um, but in the initial Karma implementation, uh, we are relying on the trusted dialable endpoint. Uh, so the transfers uh, themselves, uh, consist of three things. Uh, so the first is the bloom filter. Everybody familiar with bloom filters? A little bit, yeah. Um, so as we know, it's, it's a probabilistic data structure. Uh, we use the bloom filters to send hints about data we already know about, right? So rather than sending a full list of SIDs, saying, you know, I have all of these SIDs already, you don't need to send me those, we send a bloom filter representation and save 92, 93% uh, data storage. So it's a small, concise representation of the things that we have. Now, it is probabilistic, so we can have false positives, right? We can, uh, the other side can say, oh, I think you have this, um, and we don't actually. Um, so that's why the protocol works in rounds. So we will send a bloom filter a CID root uh, or roots potentially uh, of the structure that we want. Uh, and then we will receive, we will send or receive car files of the actual blocks. Uh, and the last thing is uh, car mirror works in two modes. There's both a push and a pull mode. Uh, so again, in our general sort of operation, we have uh, a user on a device who will want to pull in their latest data, right? Sort of like a, a Git model. Uh, so pull in their latest data, make whatever updates, do whatever operations they want, and then push that back potentially. All right, so very high level. Uh, quickly, this is the general uh, diagram of how pull works. Uh, so one important note, uh, it is a stateless protocol happening over HTTP. So um, on our first round of pulling, we may not have, uh, we may not know anything about what the other side does or doesn't have. So we request um, a CID root. Uh, the bloom here on the first pass is optional. Uh, so the purple on the, the left is the requester side. Green on the right is the responder. So the requester makes requests as, I want this SID, right? Like I want this uh, graph, this DAG. Uh, the responder will walk the, its local graph, building up a response car file, saying here, here are the blocks that you've asked for uh, and send those back over the wire. The local uh, store on the requester will update, say, okay, now I've got these blocks and check to see if there are further rounds necessary. There's still more data that they need. The push side uh, is basically the same thing in reverse, more or less, right? So if I am pushing things, uh, I am going to generate the car file. 
uh, with its, its matching bloom filter, send that across, uh, across the wire. The responder side receives those blocks, add them to the local store, updates its bloom uh, with now the new SIDS that it is aware of and sends that back. And again, in both of these cases, this will happen in a couple rounds until the transfer is complete. <clears throat> so a quick overview of sort of where we are. Uh, so we have the spec uh, that uh, has sort of defines the operation as specs do. Um, uh, we have a uh, go-car mirror library, uh, which does the sort of core implementation, the bloom calculations, et cetera. Uh, and then we've implemented this as a Kubo plugin uh, so that you can add it to your Kubo installation uh, and run this, which I'm gonna do. Who doesn't love a live demo? All right, let's do a little bit of font size here so we can see. Uh, okay, so I am going to do it live, as they say. Uh, so we've got IPTB fresh. Uh, so we've done a couple wrappers around the uh, IPTB testbed library, basically so that we can run multiple uh, Kubo instances. So you can see I've just launched uh, two instances here running. So we're gonna go over here and say, just see some log output. All right, so those are our two Kubo nodes. You can see uh, part of our wrapper scripts have also turned on some debugging. So you can see the car mirror plugin is actually enabled in both of those. All right, uh, so just, so we can see what's happening. Uh, so this little uh, helper script. So we've actually spun up uh, HTTP endpoints on both instances uh, at points on localhost. And now we get to do the fun part. Are we ready? Oh, wait. <laughs> you guys ready for the fun part? This is the part where it can go horribly wrong. So uh, let's see. OK, so uh, using a, a uh, a tool uh, called Random Files, written by this guy Juan Benet, uh, generated a directory uh, full of random data. Uh, so we can just have a look at this. This is 2.4 megabytes, so not huge, but also we're doing this live on a time constraint. Um, okay, so if I, uh, IPFS, I one add, uh, so I'm just gonna load these into one of the Kubo nodes. Right, so in this scenario, the bottom right uh, is gonna be node one. We'll consider it our server in the cloud. Uh, node zero in the top right is our client. All right, there we go. So we've added, right, just simple IPFS add command. Uh, these blocks are now in the bottom right. Uh, but if I just do this here, uh, so if I try to get that, offline, right? So we won't uh, let bit swap or any discovery happen. And I don't actually want to grab these, right? So you can see IPFS zero, right? So top right doesn't have this, uh, SID doesn't know about it, which makes sense uh, because this is a new installation. Okay, so we are going to now pull, right? From, uh, so dash A is the address we're pulling from. Uh, and dash C is the SID. Okay, moment of truth. Drum roll, please. Oh, amazing. You guys do anything I say? Uh, so we can see some activity now happening back and forth. It'll go through a couple rounds, right? So you can see uh, there's some uh, block store walking, bloom filter calculating, uh, and it completed successfully. Phew. Uh, now, <laughs> Uh, okay, so just to verify, let's see, we'll go IPFS zero now should have uh, this SID. Again, offline, All right, woo, all right. So we've successfully transferred uh, the full thing. So this is uh, what we refer to as a cold start, right? So IPFS uh, zero didn't have any of these files, right? So, and it didn't actually know what was gonna be in. All it knew was 
it wanted this particular SID. So in Fission's use case, if we're talking about something like a user's file system, right, we use uh, currently DNS uh, and DNS link to store the hash of the current root of a user's file system. Right? So we know we're able to get that as a starting data. I know I want this. I don't know how much of it you have. I don't know anything about what's in it. Um, so that's our, our cold start scenario. All right, so if I generate some more files into this, uh, and we'll dial this down just a little bit, add a couple files, right? So now on uh, my client device, I've made some, uh, some updates. It's probably a cat picture. Uh, and I'm gonna add this back into, so this time I'm gonna actually add it into uh, the node zero, right? So I fetched a bunch of data, I'm adding some new data, I get a new uh, root SID for that file system, and I should be able to push this back up. So I'm gonna copy that new SID, right? So Carmir from node zero is gonna push up to uh, node one, this new SID, and we'll see a bunch of stuff. Holy cow, so much faster. Right, so what's happened here is now, uh, I already have some of the blocks and I have some context about the blocks that the other end has, right? So I don't need to send all of uh, that data back, right? Like, so now this directory uh, full of files is up to a whopping 2.5 megs, uh, but I don't need to send that full 2.5 megs back, right? I have the context, I know it probably only needs this new stuff, so I can batch that up and send it, uh, and we go much, much faster. Uh, just to give a little more detail, so if I look at uh, the stats output, uh, obviously some, uh, some refining possible here in terms of what's um, interesting, but we do sort of instrument all of this, uh, all of this activity. I don't want to insert emoji here. Um, so yeah, so if we look through here, it's, I think some of the important ones. So right now, the protocol happens, uh, oh boy, uh, in batches. There we go. So you can see uh, we had, uh, this would be the second run down here where it says begin batch, uh, right? So we had two batches in that quick uh, send back. The other batch was probably a little bit more than that. Uh, yeah, it looks like it was three, there we go. Uh, so three rounds for the first one uh, and only two going back. All right, cool. Back to the presentation. Whew. All right, uh, so just real quickly uh, to wrap up. So next thing, so like I said, we've got some instrumentation. We're working on putting together uh, better benchmarks. There is uh, a fair bit of potential tuning in Carmir, right? So both around uh, the size of the bloom filters we have. One of the other things is uh, in the sort of cold start scenario, right? Because we don't know necessarily what's on the other end, uh, we don't send the full DAG on the first try, right? Because that may be duplicate. Right, so there's some tuning in there, like, well, how much, if I don't know, how much do I send at the start? Uh, again, trying to find that balance between duplicate data sent uh, and, and the rounds. Um, next up, in the next up category is TS or JS Carmir. Uh, again, our primary sort of target is in browser. Uh, we started with Go so that we could add it to Kubo and other Go-based implementations. Uh, next up is the JavaScript end. Uh, and then we'll deploy and profit. <clears throat> uh, other future things uh, for Carmir. Um, so we've specified, but not yet implemented. So the, the code that I just showed you was in uh, what we call batch mode. So that's straight, like traditional HTTP request response. I send you a bloom filter, car file, potentially, uh, and I wait until you send me back and then we repeat our rounds. Uh, the spec actually outlines a streaming version of that, right? Where this would just be a single connection over WebSockets or what have you uh, that uh, does 
um, yeah, just streaming back and forth. Uh, also, uh, still in a bit of research, I think is the safe way to say this, uh, would be the carpool uh, full spec. So the, the full grand vision. So car mirror right now is this one-to-one -one point to point, which actually works really well for what we're trying to do. Um, but of course does mean that you are looking at uh, a specific predefined endpoint, right? So also much like bow, no discovery here, right? Discovery would be at a different layer. So in car mirror, we know, right? So, if, so at fission, we know where our endpoints are most days. Uh, and so we're able to point directly at those. Uh, carpool would break this away from that that one-on-one. -on -one. Um, the other future thing we've talked a lot about uh, as a company, uh, we are shifting to uh, Rust as our sort of primary language. Um, so a Rust implementation is likely in the future, uh, particularly if some of you all help build it. And that's that.